Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the real United States. And, well, today, Beverly's in front of the camera with us. In our last episode, we were up in Baltimore, Maryland, at the Lexington Market. And uh, hopefully it didn't uh, land on the cutting room floor that we purchased some chitlins and also some hog maw. Now, these are the chitlins we've just gotten home. They're, they're nice and warm. And... Uh, as I had explained in our, our previous episode, this is uh, chitlings are uh, pig intestine that have been thoroughly scrubbed and cleaned and the uh, membranes removed and cooked with onions and celery and various other things. This is predominantly a part of African American culture. Um, so this is gonna be Beverly and I's first experience with it. I had a little taste while we were up there at the, at the market to see that they, they taste good, they taste like pork. I uh, haven't tried the hog maw yet. So this is some of the things that we purchased while we were at Lexington Market. And we thought we'd, we'd take a few minutes and share some of this with you. I don't know how much of this uh, we're gonna actually going to end up using. Well, we got some deep fried, tempura fried uh, vegetables. Got to have some vegetables with your meat. And there's our, our white bean pie that uh, we purchased at the bakery while we were there. And some of the candies that we purchased from the candy shop there so the pie got a little mauled up on top in the transport back home but uh, not too much the worse for wear so now we're going to try and uh, try some of these delicacies that are that are new to us and we'll see how this goes so here we go here we go you want to you go first sure Now, I got to taste these in advance, so I have an idea what they taste like. Beverly hasn't tasted them yet. So she's going to go with kind of a small helping there. It's my understanding that these are traditionally eaten with some hot sauce, so we got some hot sauce out. And then hog maw, which is tripe. It's pig tripe, pork tripe. The lining of the, uh, the stomach. This takes quite a while to prepare. This is a very labor-intensive dish. Yeah, I am. If that's the worst thing that happens today, it was a good day. Yeah, I know, but I thought you'd like to know. I <laughs> think you'd want your whole dinner on the table. Yeah, it tastes like stewed pork. It actually does have enough salt. It's good. I'm gonna try the hog maw because, I, like I say, I haven't I haven't tried this yet. So that's good. The hog maw is good. All right, it's very very nice. It it basically tastes like stewed pork. Yeah. Exactly what you would expect it to taste like. So. Again, this is a cultural thing, so uh, something we hadn't had an opportunity to experience yet, and uh, something we've been, you know, wanting to get to, but uh, hadn't yet. So yeah, it's actually very good. I suppose some, yeah, some people are, are sensitive to the idea of uh, eating organ meats, um, while liver seems to be generally accepted heart, tongue, kidneys, those sorts of things, uh, tripe, and chitlins. A lot of people, for some reason, just are uncomfortable about it, turn their nose up at it. So I guess you have to go at it with something of an open mind. It's, uh, it's actually quite good. But again, it's very labor intensive. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube. You can find this real easy. Uh, it has, it's not spelled quite the way it's pronounced. It's spelled as chitterlings. I'll put that on the screen right there, and uh, but it's pronounced Chetlands. That's good. Now again, because well, we bought this in a a specialty shop, very labor-intensive dish. Uh, a pint container of Chetlands was, I, I think, know. nine dollars and ninety cents or something like that. I think so. so just a little less than ten dollars U.S. 
Hogma is the same price, only we got a half pint of that. Vegetables? If I must. <laughs> yeah, that'll be good for you, dear. Thank you. You're welcome. Got some broccoli and some mushrooms and things keep rolling away from me. Zucchini. Zucchini and onion. I'm going to take it all. <laughs> I'll leave a couple there in case you decide you want some more. Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't know that this really needs any uh, any additional seasoning. It's it's pork. I mean, you could season this just about any way you 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 uh, like to season pork if you eat pork. I know some of our viewers in certain parts of the world don't eat pork, and that's fine too. Um, we do, you know. What do you think? I like the hog ma, the chitterlings, well, not so sure about that. I like them. No? Not that much difference in the taste to, to me, but. Okay. There's a bit of a difference in the mouth feel. Yeah, they're different textures. Different textures um, between the the hog maw and the chitlins. The um, the chitlins are uh, the thinner, much thinner, and uh, maybe a little more what you might consider springy. I don't want to say rubbery because they're not. They're they're very tender. The hog the the hog maw the has uh, you know more of the same kind of texture you'd expect from uh, pork meat. We'll definitely have this again. I like it. Yeah, we tried something new, and I believe it was a success. Yeah, sometimes when you go off on culinary safari, you're surprised and not in a good way. This was actually a, this was a nice surprise. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you've had uh, been interested in what chitlings or hog maw or the combination thereof might be like, yeah, I encourage you to go ahead and try. You know, try not to think about what part of the animal it is, try to just concentrate on how it tastes and whether you enjoy it. I suspect, as with any dish, that it's, it's ideal to get it from somebody who has a lot of experience preparing it. Um, I, I, I don't know that I would have wanted to have tried this from somebody who it was their first time preparing it. Uh, the ladies there who run the market, or the stall inside of Lexington Market, have been doing this for many, many years, and uh, have a lot of expertise at doing this. So this is, this is very good. It's uh, typically what the, again what these are stewed with is onions and celery. I, there's no um, vegetables. They, they've been stewed down. It takes about four hours or more to actually stew these things. Okay, it's time for dessert. And now we have this uh, bean pie. And I understand this is made with a, some sort of a white bean, like a great northern bean or something. I don't know if this is a sweet pie or a savory pie. Uh, the lady at the bakery at the Lexington Market described it as sort of like a custard pie or a sweet potato pie. And so I'm assuming it's a sweet pie, that this is a dessert pie. Feels like a custard type pie when you cut into it. Kind of small by pie standards. And the 
hardest part is getting out the first piece. Always, always the hardest part is getting out the first piece of pie. Thank you, dear. Welcome. It does, yeah, it looks sort of like a cross between a, a uh, sweet potato pie and a custard pie. Looks nice. Looks very nice. That's beautiful. I had never heard of a pie made with beans. Now, I know in, in the Pacific Rim, the Asian culture, they make uh, sweetened red bean confections. Well, okay, this was a hit. That's good. Bev likes this. Not real sweet, but I think it's very good. The yeah, only, it's, it's reminiscent of a custard pie. Yeah, it's like a custard pie. The only thing is I would say is that You'd have to like the flavor of white beans as well, because if you don't like white beans, you probably won't like this. It's not mealy, really, like you would ex like some uh, bean confections are. If you've ever had a sweetened red bean paste uh, in a in a confection in a, a donut or, or some sort of a filled sort of a dough confection. That bean paste can be a little uh, granular, a little mealy, we would call it. Mm -hmm. This is quite smooth, more like a custard pie. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Bean pie. All right. I gotta figure out how to make this stuff. Yeah, we're gonna have to look up the recipe, <laughs> for, you know, folks, so. <laughs> If you've got a link for a recipe to bean pie, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. I'd certainly love to try your recipe for bean pie. Because we're going to have to figure out how to make this. This is actually very good. So we'd like to thank you for joining us here in our home on The Real United States. We hope you've enjoyed this tour of some of the culinary treats we brought home from Baltimore. If you have questions or comments, just want to say hi, leave it in the comment section below. Love hearing from all of you. I'd like to get back to all of you as soon as I possibly can. If you haven't already, pick subscribe and join us. Come along for the adventure. And as always, thank you for watching.